Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is the first of a series of videos on welding stainless steel. So today we're TIG welding stainless steel, 16 gauge. That's roughly a sixteenth of an inch thick, 1.6 millimeters thick. I want to show what it looks like on the back side when you do not shield it with argon and then show what it looks like when you do shield it with argon. And then also we're going to do a butt joint, start to finish, shielded with argon in a little test fixture. Let's do it. What you see here is a 2 inch wide piece of 16 gauge stainless welded at 50 amps, no filler metal. Kind of hot, making, making sure I got penetration just because I want to show you what happens when you get penetration on stainless steel with no argon backing or no backing of any kind. That's what's called sugaring, it's called granulation of stainless steel. That's what happens when you melt stainless steel on the backside without argon shielding or copper, copper backing or something to prevent that from happening. This is a single flow meter regulator, uh, kind that comes with most welders. Nothing wrong with that. Here's a double flow meter regulator from Flametech Scorpion. This is, this is a good option for when you need auxiliary shielding gas, like when you need torch gas, but you also need to purge the inside of a piece of tubing, pipe, uh, manifold, whatever. This is a way to do it. You can also use a secondary bottle with another flow meter, however, uh, it just depends on what you need. Taking two bottles on site somewhere can be a lot of carrying bottles. A dual flow meter regulator doesn't cost that much more than a single. At least this one doesn't. And it works great for things like this. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you weld that same piece of stainless steel, no filler metal, using this little purge fixture where I'm providing argon backing to the back side where it's molten stainless. Same amperage, same everything except now we're going to have much different results. So it's nice and shiny, it's smooth, there's no granulation, there's no pits and crevices where bacteria can grow. This is pretty horrible right here. This is with no argon backing. This, this is a horrible situation for pharmaceutical or sanitary tubing applications. Okay, up next we're going to do a 1G butt joint in stainless steel, 16 gauge stainless. You can pause that and look at the settings if you want to. First thing I'm going to do is get tacks on the end in this purge fixture, providing argon backing to the back side. I'm using a number 12 ceramic ferret cup with about 25 CFH of argon. I've also got about 20 to 25 CFH on this fixture on the back side, shielding the back side. I like to put a few extra dabs of filler on my end tacks. Main reason is it helps me going from and helps me welding to keep from blowing those ends away. The thinner something is, the more important that becomes. So I'm using 045 308L stainless wire here, trying to move along at a fairly good clip. Stainless steel, you want to definitely establish your puddle with, with less than much less than three seconds and get moving. You don't want to hang around and let things heat up. That's bad for stainless. Here I'm going to start off on this tack, and it gives me a little extra second or so at having that button tack on the end. To start off on it helps a lot make a completely penetrated weld all the way to the end tacks. This is a nice blown up shot. I'm trying to move ahead about once per second, about an eighth of an inch each time I move the torch. I'm trying to keep my arc length equal to or less than the diameter of the electrode. In this case I'm using a 332 electrode. So I'm keeping a nice tight arc and I'm trying to move ahead at a pretty good steady pace. The cup is helping a lot prevent discoloration. So, you know, not the best thing I've ever done, but um, not the worst either. At least it's penetrated fully from end to end, or almost. We'll see in a second, there's an iffy spot on the back side here. Right there where I first started the first run, I could have used two or three more amps, or I should have slowed down just a little bit. I would have preferred more amperage actually, that would have helped, that way I could keep my travel speed up. But the rest of it came out pretty good, shielded pretty good from that purge fixture. Right there, see it's a little iffy on the penetration. About two more amps would have done it. And I'm going to attribute that to the fact that that was cold when I started out and the rest of it, the piece had kind of warmed up a little bit. Okay, well that does it for today. So you see the big, big difference in using shielding gas on the back side of stainless steel. You can imagine how that that uh, granulated sugared backside would affect something like an orange juice line or, a, or something in a brewery or even a pharmaceutical factory. Bacteria will grow on that. It's totally unacceptable. You'll get fired for doing that. You'll get blackballed for doing that on a job 
on a juice factory or a brewery or something like that. So you not you got to have that you got to have that secondary shielding and the easiest way to do that is with a dual flow meter regulator. Now you could have a whole separate argon bottle with a with a separate regulator. That's actually fine. Uh, in your shop, but if you're going on site somewhere, you don't always want to carry two bottles of argon with you. So the dual flow meter regulator from Flame Tech Scorpion, I just have added that to the store at weldmonger.com. It's a, it's, a it's a good flow meter. It's a re very reasonable on the price, and I think it's a good value. So you also saw me using the, the Furic number 12 ceramic cup. That's a really good cup if you need a long stick out with really good shielding on stainless steel. That's on the store also. Thanks for watching. See you next time.